Um, so you grew up in uh, Kansas. Yeah, I grew up in Kansas. Graduated high school in 1998, and after high school, I ended up going out to the East Coast to work with my brother for a couple of years, building the uh, cell phone towers. And then I was kind of missing home, missing being around my family, so we ended up moving back to Kansas. And while I was back in Kansas, my cousin came down from Washington and spent a week down there because my grandpa passed away. And he kind of hung out with us and saw how I worked because uh, I was working with my dad. We were building houses. And he liked what he saw, and so he uh, ended up having us come out here and do a remodel on his house for him. And I was, after we were done with the remodel, he was like, well, what would you think about moving out here and working for me? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I want to start this business. And he told me about the business, and I'd never worked on a car in my life. I'd never even changed my own oil. Right. And he was like, well, I want to start this business where we go on site and, you know, change people's oil and do services on their vehicles and whatnot. And I said, well, I'm willing to learn. And so I moved out here. Six months later, I moved out here, and we got it off the ground literally started out of his garage and ended up having two shops, uh, two on-site service trucks, and then a 24-hour roadside assistance truck. And it was going pretty good, but we had a third person that was uh, kind of ha had invested in our company and he kind of screwed us over. And so we decided to close the doors after things started going south. Um, it was just a bit too much for us to keep up. And so we... 11 years was a good run, you know? So we closed the doors and uh, that's when I went to work for Kenworth and worked there for several years and then got laid off and actually ended up going back to work for one of the technicians that I had hired for my company. I ended up going to work for him and which was, you know, kind of was nice that he was able to be, help, be there for me to help me out. So I went to work for him and then COVID hit and Everything kind of went to crap after that, and just been trying to get back on my feet since. But fortunately, here a couple months back, uh, where I was staying, the same spot Eric was actually, um, there was a group that came up and they got us into housing. And so, and I just got moved into this house uh, in the Lincoln District uh, two weeks ago, and they're gonna help me get my license back, all my fines paid and everything to get everything current so that I can get my license and, and all that stuff so that I can actually get back out there working again. Oldest brother is in Kansas like six months out of the year. The rest of the time he stays in Belize. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's got a, he's got a Lake Canopolis in Kansas. He's got a little spot there that he stays at basically during the summer, spring and summertime. And then when it gets cold, he goes back to Belize huh. with his wife and they have a place out there that he does uh, takes people out on boats to, to go fishing and whatnot. So for the most part, most of my family is either here in Washington now or in, in Texas. How long ago did that pass? This April, it will be uh, four years. Mine, mine passed in 2021. And it was rough because, you know, he was in great health and all of a sudden one day he just started having chest pains and he my young youngest brother was with him and he said i think i need to go to the hospital and he went in and had a heart attack while he was there and ended up being uh they had him on they had taken and uh put him in a induced coma uh, and whatnot because of the lack of oxygen that he had to his brain or whatever they wanted to, but when they we were taking, so I was trying to get there. Everybody else had made it there, but it's, everything was working against me. My plane from Seattle got delayed like three times. And then when I got to Chicago, I ended up having to stay overnight in Chicago because I missed my connecting flight because I was delayed here in Seattle. And so then they made me wait till the next day. And then it seemed like every single plane, they actually put me on five different flights. And whichever one came that actually was gonna make it, I was gonna get on because they kept having, plane problems or something was delaying it and it was just like man what is going on so long story short by the time I got there my father had passed away and and it was, it was rough and you know I was not 
like I said, he was in great health, so it was not like any of us were expecting it anytime soon, you know? I mean, he used to take us hunting and do all kinds of trips with us and whatnot, and, you know, those are things that I miss a lot, and just, it was very unexpected. You kind of start falling into believing that there is something. Yeah. But just haven't really kind of landed on what, what it is or how we got here or, you know, what our purpose is or any of that. Kind of right. Stuff. But you realize there's, you know, something. And that's, you know, that's where a lot of people begin because they, they kind of realize what people are, what they're teaching us nowadays is just a lot of nonsense. And, you know, the, the only thing that's a lot to be taught in school nowadays is Big Bang Theory. And that, and that ultimately what happened was that matter came to life all of a sudden. Yeah. And then DNA would just created itself. The DNA is a biological code that makes up every living thing in this world. Every living thing in this world. These trees, what color they're going to be, what kind of leaves they are, how tall they're going to be. Animals, rabbits, fish, you know, squirrels, ants, everything. They all have a, 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 a biological code that makes up what they look like, how they um, go about their life, all of that. You know, we start believing, though, there has to be every single thing in the world has a designer. If, if DNA is a biological code, we have to realize that there was a creator. Somebody created that, you know? And then we have to figure out, okay, well, if that's true, let's start looking into some things. But what the Bible tells us is that we are, um, we are without excuse when it comes to knowing that there's a creator. Because he says he reveals himself through creation since the beginning of creation. I believe that I'm going to, to heaven because I believe that I have good intentions with everything that I do, you know, I, I don't ever go about anything with ill in my heart, you know, I, don't, I wish the best for anybody, and if I can help somebody, I will help them, and even if it's, you know, the only thing that I got, I'll give it to them, you know, I mean, I, that's just how I've always been, um, that's how my mother and father raised me, you know, and, and I just, I don't have time in my life to, to have that ill anger and, and whatnot you know i mean because there's a lot of things i could be angry about in this world but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't do you any good right you know and because there's also a lot of this to be thankful for as well right. yeah. if if we're saying morally if we say that you know we we are good people where does this standard come from where does the ultimate standard of, of you know good and bad good and evil right and wrong what is the ultimate standard that we use he gives us that moral compass, you know what I mean? So we know what's good, what's right, what's wrong, what's bad, what's evil, all of that. He gave us that, that ultimate standard. Have you ever in your life taken something that didn't belong to you, regardless of value, you know, if it was something small, anything you, did you have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? Yes. Yeah. Um, the Bible says that um, it frowns upon adultery. Right? But Jesus came along and he said, anybody that looks at a woman with lust has committed adultery with her in your heart already. His standard is so perfect, it's so high. Looking at somebody with lust, if we had the opportunity, we would do whatever we want to do with this person. That's why he's saying that you already committed adultery in your heart. Just by looking at somebody that way, right? Um, have you ever looked at somebody with lust? Yes. Right. And um, sex outside of marriage. Um, and have you ever used the Lord's name in vain? Using it without due respect, using, you know, Jesus Christ or OMG. Yeah. Right? So in the Old Testament, when he explains that these Jew Jewish people wouldn't even write his name down, they wouldn't even say his name because they, they look at it as so holy that they didn't have. Um, any business even writing it down or saying it and it was actually it was punishable by death by using his name out of um, out of respect right um, that's how serious that was when they you know and God said you know I should not take the name the Lord and, uh, name of God in vain it even says that if we even have hated anybody that we have committed murder that's how high his standard is he's a perfect God and that's what the rules he's laid out for us and um, so by our own admission, we are lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterers at heart. We fornicate. We um, use the Lord's name in vain, and we, we, you know, we have, in His eyes, we have murdered people. So, if we are basing it in off of God's moral law, at the end of the day, we're innocent or guilty. We're guilty. We're guilty. 
The Bible says that there is no righteous person, no, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He said our, our good deeds are a filthy rags. You know, even when we think we're doing good, it means nothing. We don't earn anything from the, from anything that we do. Um, but that's what he's telling us. Nobody, nobody is good enough. You guys can't be good enough. You know, the, 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 it's like us walking into a courtroom and being, uh, you know, convicted of a, a horrible crime. But we'll say, you know, well, I've done, also done a lot of good things in my life. You know, so, and, and, and that was in the past. I don't do that anymore. That doesn't matter, right? We've broken the law. We have to, they have to give us justice, right? They have to be a just judge. To, and so if we're, if we're guilty by his standard of good and evil, is it heaven or hell for us? I believe heaven. Why do you think that? Because he knows that we're not going to be able to do all these things. I mean, that it's a matter of us being able to take and ask for forgiveness and acknowledge our our faults and whatnot and you know if you can acknowledge your faults and learn from them then I believe that that puts you on the right path so let me look so let's look at it this way if, if we had a if we had a, a pedophile that believed that what he was doing was it wasn't immoral it was something natural for him whether the whether the you know the person that's underage agrees with it or, or potentially consent with it or not right but the judge is telling him you know this is wrong you know it's the law we you know the person is not allowed to do that but the person is just saying you know forgive me you know you know that i can't help myself just for, forgive me i'm asking for forgiveness can you forgive me somebody still you know that it, the just you know if, if you're the parent in the courtroom and the judge says yeah i believe you you, you know i forgive you go ahead and get out of here just try not to do that anymore. If you're the parent of that kid, what are you thinking of that judge right now? You're thinking, this is not justice. You're not a loving judge. You are, you are, you're corrupt, right? right? That's what we're thinking. And that's the same thing with God. It is, is he, he, he relates um, his laws and his standards and stuff like that to things that we can understand. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you know, you just have to ask for forgiveness. And at the end of the day, we get to go to heaven. But that's that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible, you know, we don't get to just pass forgiveness and, you know, be forgiven. But there was something that God did so that we don't have to go to hell. Because we're all destined to go. That's, that's, the, the, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. God is paying us what we've earned. That's, and he says we have all sinned and fallen short. To a perfect God, we, he's paying us our wages. He's paying us in death. And, but he did something for us that we don't have to go to hell. You know what that was? He sacrificed Jesus. Right. Yep. And the whole, the majority of the world knows that Jesus gave himself up, his life, to, to take on the sin of the world. But most people don't understand what was happening there because Jesus Christ was on the cross. Right before he died, it said, it is finished. And, you know, you kind of have to wonder, what is, what is he saying there? The debt has been paid. What the Bible teaches us is all we have to do to accept that free gift of salvation is to trust in Him and repent of our sins. He asks us to trust in Him like we trust a parachute. We don't just believe that there's a parachute sitting on the ground. Before we're about to jump out of an airplane, we're not just like, I believe that parachute's there and jump out. We have to put the parachute on. That's why, that's that's what, you know, we're putting our trust in. Not just believing it's there, but actually putting it, putting it on. And that's what Jesus was telling us. Put me on. Put on my blood that I'm, I've covered your guys' iniquities. I've covered your transgressions with my blood. Trust me. Trust in me. And he tells us to repent of our sins. A supreme being, a perfect creator that spoke out creation. He created everything in this world. He lives outside of time, space, matter, and energy. And he has created everything that we've ever known. And he created us in his image to have a relationship with us so that we worship him, that we become, you know, uh, he is able to be glorified through us. And this is the reason why he created us. We turned against him and we deserve, we deserve help. But he loved us so much that like the most famous Bible verse in the Bible is John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever shall believe in him 
never perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus came and he told, he told us, I am the way and the truth and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through me. The Bible is the spoken word of God. Every single thing in there is true. And so when we break it down and start looking at what it's telling us, we can't be good enough. We've already lost. We've broken the law. We deserve hell. But he gave us a way out. He's telling us, trust in me and repent of your sins. And he's telling us that when we ask the Father to be unless we're born again, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Created in the image of God. We have a purpose here. And what he promises when we do these things, he says that I will give you a new heart with new desires. Everything that we thought we wanted for happiness, for whatever that we were doing on this earth, for whatever reasons we're doing it for, he promises to give us a new heart with new desires. And it will change our life in the way that we talk to people, the way that we um, look at everything in nature. Our purpose is revealed to us and we're born again. If you do these things, his promise is fulfillment of joy. He promises fulfillment of joy when the, when you lay your life down at the cross and and ask him to reveal that truth to you. I want to I want to accept that free gift of salvation that Jesus Christ came and died for us. The most brutal death ever. And he was a sinless man. He's the only one in the world that didn't deserve this kind of punishment, and he was he did it for us. So that even though we were still sinners, he came and died for us. We, we will, you know, we'll see rarely people die for one another when they love each other, let alone somebody that they, right. that, that hates them. If somebody said, you know, hated me, it would be hard to lay your life down for that person. But that's what he did. He came and, came and laid his life down for us so that we can, we can have a relationship with the father and, and come back home to him after this is all over. And that's what gives us that hope that after all this, this misery is over, we get to go back home because we are in the image of God. And a lot of these people, I think, forget that. You have a lot of people that go to church every week, but the first thought they think of when they come out here and see somebody sitting on the street, is they don't think about their story. They don't think about their name and who they, where they came from or how they get out here. Even though every single person out here realizes how expensive everything is and that we're all on the verge of being out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we are all created in the image of God. And what I tell people when I come out and talk to them is that, the Bible says it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camel to walk through the eye of a needle. The reason why it says that is that people that have, we love our stuff. We're so consumed by by wanting more and more and letting that just drive us and, and you know be the factor of, of what we're doing every day. That's all we can think about, going to work and buying more stuff and getting this and that. People that don't have, they have, they have that out of the way to the point where they're not thinking of that, just just wanting more, wanting more. They want their portion for the day. They just want their portion for the day, and that's what that's what people are out here working for, just trying to get their food and something that they need, right? But when you have everything removed out of the way, and you're not just constantly consumed by what this world is offering us, that's when you have the opportunity to build that relationship with God, and and you know, and have Jesus Christ in your heart. That's People are blessed in that way. And I think a lot of them don't really see it. You know what I mean? But there's two things that we have to do to be saved. Trust in the Lord, trust in Jesus Christ and what he came to do for us and repent of our sins. When do you think that you'll do that? I'm honestly trying to figure out how to truly let go because I feel like I I don't know what's holding me back and you know I because I believe I believe in it and I believe in what you're saying and but kind of like how you were saying up until that after your father passed away how you just were going through the motions of things that's where I feel I'm at and I don't know how to get past that no matter what I do and I want to get past that the Bible says that the, the, that the devil is the ruler of this world he will always try to tell us tomorrow, tomorrow, do it later. He's a distraction. He tries to, he doesn't even care if you believe in him, as long as you don't believe in God. Because if we don't believe in God, if we don't trust that Jesus Christ came to die for our sins, 
he don't care what else you believe. You can believe in whatever you want. Every other religion in the world, every single other religion in the world tells us that we have to try to be good enough. We have to try to be good enough people. Whether we're talking about Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, all of them. Every single other one, Buddhist, Hindu, they all say we have to be good enough people. Christianity is saying it is nothing that we do so no man can boast. We do not earn our salvation because then we have something to, to boast about, to brag about. It's not through that, it's through, it's from, it's, it's grace through faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ earns us his grace. It's what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And the devil will try to distract us in every way possible, but 150,000 people die every single day. Every single day. That's how many people die. So yeah, he wants us to wait till later. He wants us to try to say, I got to figure some things out and, you know, realize, you know, and, and, and the severity of it is, is like me and you being in an airplane and I have my parachute on. I come out here only for you, only because I love you enough to come out here and tell you the truth. Imagine me thinking, knowing that there's a heaven and there's a hell and there's only one way. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, I'm the, I'm the way, the truth and the life and nobody comes to the Father except through me. Imagine me knowing that and then just keeping it to myself. Imagine you standing out in the middle of the street and saying, I see a semi coming and I'm just like, I'm safe. That's what it is, except hell's a lot worse than a semi truck. I'm gonna pull you out of the road. And, it, and I have a sense of urgency about it. You can hear it in my voice when I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm not out here for me. I'm out here speaking to people because I'm, I'm saved. I have the blood of Jesus Christ protecting me. I know where I'm going when I die. And John, 1 John in the Bible in the New Testament tells us to write these things so you may know that you have the Christ in you, that you have Christ in you. You this we're writing this so you may know that you you will see the kingdom of heaven. That's what that what the Bible's telling us. Any other religion, you, you ask them where are you going when you die. I'm not really sure. It's up to God. Maybe if I'm good enough, I'll blah blah blah, whatever. It, okay, well, that's a horrible it's a horrible thought, first of all. <laughs> and if there is, you know, if you do believe in the God kind of messed up that he's kind of making you worry about it the entire time yeah right and if there is a creator of the entire universe and everything that is you would expect him to leave uh something for us to let us know why we're made what our purpose is what we're supposed to be doing and what we what's going to happen when we're done here we would only that was only logical that 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 would that he would do that for us <laughs> that's the only reason that i come out here he will give you a new heart and new desires, and all you have to do is lay your life down. That's what he's waiting for you to give up. Give up your own life. Give up your heart to him and let him do his will through you. That's when the Holy Spirit will fill you and he will fill you with something that is just undescribable. And it's hard because once that happens, you'll understand what I'm telling you. And, and it is every single um, follower of Christ they've been through they've been reborn they've been born again and, and it's 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 so detrimental to them that they, somebody understands because i'm you know i'm trying to use my words as, as well as i can and i'm not very well spoken but on the inside i'm begging people do this please if heaven and hell is real and this is the truth and god will show it to you you just have to just lay everything down and ask them please if, if, if this is real, show it to me. I'm I'm open, and I want the truth, and I want I want to lay my life down for you, that you you can work through me. Our temple is the our body is the dwelling place for the Holy Spirit to do His work, to do His will, and that's what we're here for, to save as many people as we can, so that He can be glorified. And I I I, I tell people, you know, after I'm done talking to you, I will pray for you. You know, tonight when I go to sleep, and I don't just say that I'm going to pray for you and then go home and go about my business. But when I go to sleep tonight, I want you to realize that you are being prayed for and that the truth is revealed to you and that this is a turning point in your life. No matter what that entails, no matter what that, that comes of that, that God is, God's will is done through you and that you are, you are filled with joy. And your life turns in that, that that manner and not, you know, not based off of how much stuff we get or, you know, because that's the big thing nowadays, the prosperity gospel. These people are 
using using trying to use this message to, to make as much money as they can and then they're saying that that's that's their blessing Jesus is blessing them with millions of dollars because they're doing this and doing that yeah tell that to Paul the Apostle tell that to Jesus Christ himself because Jesus walking around he didn't have a house that he was staying at he didn't have anything he said give up everything the person that came up to him and said how do I get to heaven he says follow my commandments he says I, I pretty much basically I followed all the commandments okay well give up everything you have and follow me and it says he, he turned and walked away with his head down because he, he had a lot to have he had he was very wealthy is what the Bible said he couldn't get he didn't want to give up all this stuff but that's what he's telling us give up give up what this world has to offer you and follow me and I'll give you the desires of your heart I will give you everything that will bring you joy if you trust in me enough to do that for me there's no limit but I hope that you know I hope that you take the time and, and ask God for these things and that he does reveal it to you and you know I will see you in heaven I appreciate you coming out here and talking to me I honestly do it means a lot because a lot of people don't think very highly of us and just to have somebody sit down and have a conversation and it means a lot yeah do you mind if I pray for you? I'm gonna go ahead Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this beautiful day. For us to just sit out here and enjoy the sun and on our backs and just have this conversation. Thank you for being in the midst of all of this. I know that you're here and that you are guiding me and guiding guiding this conversation. And I, I thank you, Lord, that Clint got to hear this. And that uh, I pray, Lord, that you open up his heart, replace his heart of stone, replace it with the heart of flesh and just open his heart for the truth and the love that you have waiting for him. We thank you so much for being patient with us, giving us time here on this earth so that we may come to you and, and understand that there is so much more than than what we see here. And it doesn't end here. That we get to come back home to you after this is all over. And I pray, Lord, that when you, when you open up his heart and, and you give him the truth that he lays his life down at the cross, Lord, and that we become a family, become one in Christ, and that we, we do see each other in heaven. And, we pray, Lord, that your hand is over us and just protect us from this world and protect us from our flesh and, and just give us that joy, Lord, that you promised us. And I pray, Lord, that you protect uh, Clint and, and that you just keep him safe. Protect his spirit, protect his heart, Lord, and open his eyes to the truth. We thank you so, so much, Lord. And I pray that when, when you reveal this truth to him, that he is able to reach a multitude of people. Give him what he needs for the day, Lord, and, and keep him safe. We thank you so much for this conversation. We thank you, Lord, for, for just being the, the, the focus point of, of everything that we're doing. We love you with all of our heart, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.